Hey everyone, February 20th, 2023. Kind of a, an interesting day at my place. Um, as of yesterday, I have now completed 59 trips around the sun. And as of today, I guess I'm starting my 60th um, revolution around the, uh, the fiery ball in the sky. Um, anyway, welcome to another short video from investingsuccess.ca. Today I want to talk to you about Western Canada and one of the products that we produce here, uh, Western Canada Heavy Crude Oil. I want to show you where our heavy crude fits into the uh, overall energy spectrum in North America. I want to show you that it's absolutely essential to um, keeping some of the refineries uh, in the United States running as they do. Here's a map of Alberta and Saskatchewan, and you can see in the map that I've got uh, these areas outlined in green. Those areas are the areas where we typically find what we call heavy crude. Other areas of Western Canada, um, the, the crude oil is not quite so heavy. And when I say heavy, I'm talking thick, gooey, viscous type of heavy to the point where the oil producers have to inject steam into the ground and the steam will actually soften up the ground, soften up the sticky gooey crude and allow it to be pumped to the surface. Once that surface, it's mixed with a chemical diluent and it is then uh, in, in diluted format sent via pipeline to a refinery in Edmonton. And at that refinery, it undergoes what is called upgrading. That is to say the heavy molecular, long molecular chains, hydrocarbon chains that make it so sticky, heavy, gooey. Um, those molecular chains are broken uh, with heat energy and, uh, and catalysts and, and chemicals. And once that process is complete, that uh, upgraded oil then is sent by pipeline and rail into the United States onto the refineries, a lot of them on the Texas Gulf Coast. So oil, and this is what a lot of people don't understand, oil is classified according to its viscosity, its thickness, its gooeyness, and it's measured in units called API. Now API is just the American Petroleum Institute, and they're the ones who came up with this way of measuring and expressing uh, viscosity. So the actual formula uh, for API is 141.5 divided by the specific gravity or the density of the crude, once you've got that figure calculated, you subtract from it 131.5. So what's left, the number that pops out of that equation, is the API number. So for example, oil from Texas is typically around API 40. Has been for a long, long time, will be for a long time. And that's why the, the crude oil refineries that make our gasoline and our heating oil and our diesel fuel, uh, all of those guys along that U.S. Gulf Coast, they are configured to basically feed their refineries with API 40 crude oil. And they operate according to the 321 crack spread. So three barrels of oil going into their process will give two barrels of gasoline and one barrel of diesel fuel. Um, diesel fuel is also known as heating oil. But here's the problem. About, oh God, 10, 15 years ago, uh, with the advent of fracking, the United States started producing what is called shale oil from places like North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, the Eagleford Shale in Texas. Shale oil is very light. And as a matter of fact, its API reading is, you know, between 50 and 59. And so you can't feed that stuff directly into the refining process. The refining process is set up it, it is designed to take oil of API 40. So how do you get this lighter shale oil uh, uh, down to a reading of API 40? Very simple, you blend it with heavier oil. Where does the heavy oil for blending come from? Hello Canada, that is where our heavy oil goes. Uh, without it, a lot of these refineries would not be able to function.
And so when it comes to crude, you know, we hear about it in the media every morning. Price of oil is up today. Price of oil is down today. The media doesn't understand any of the CPI stuff, this viscosity, this density. To them, oil is oil is oil, and it's it's sad, but because it's not. Anyway, here is the horoscope chart for crude oil futures, the West Texas Intermediate Crude Oil Futures Contract. Started trading for the first time March 30th in 1983. And this chart, this horoscope has always fascinated me. And take a close look at it and you'll see that I've got a pink rectangle delineated in the middle of the chart. That's why it fascinates me. And that rectangle, the corner points are made up of Neptune, Mars, the North Node, and take your pick, either Saturn or Moon. They're, they're side by side. And so what I've noticed in my back testing and my research is I pay attention to times of the year when Sun is passing by uh, the, the uh, rectangle corners in this 1983 natal crude oil horoscope. I also watch for times of the year when Mars is passing by these four points. Very often I will find that crude oil will exhibit an inflection point, an inflection swing high, an inflection swing low. And I talk about this in my Financial Astrology Almanac every year. Now the company I want to introduce you to today is called Meg Energy. Uh, headquartered in Calgary, Alberta. Trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange. The ticker symbol is MEG for MEG Energy. It traces its IPO date back to the 29th of July in 2010. And at that IPO date, uh, you can see here the placements of the planets. Nothing overly exciting pops out, uh, except maybe you could argue Mars and Saturn are together, Jupiter and Uranus are together, Pluto and the node are together, and if you join those pairs, you're gonna get this triangle. Um, aside from that, there, there really is nothing else, but that's good, that's a good starting point. So what I'm gonna be looking for then in the Meg Energy uh, horoscope is times when um, let's say moon is passing the natal midheaven, moon is passing the natal ascendant, moon is passing the natal sun. Yes, I'm going to look and see when moon is passing these three uh, triangular points here. I'm going to look maybe for times when Venus is passing natal sun, uh, Venus perhaps is passing these three corner points. Um, and that's about it. So I've already got a chart made up where I've, I've done a lot of this. So let's take a look at what I've done here. Well, oh, before I go any further, just a reminder, what I'm talking about here is geocentric astro astrology. Um, so you can get it from a software program. You can get it from a, uh, a repository online. You can buy the new American ephemeris for the 21st century but it is geocentric. Now, here's the chart that I've got made up for you. And yeah, I, you know, I looked at this and I'm seeing, um, here's an inflection point in, in early 2022, moon passing the natal midheaven. Um, Venus passing the natal midheaven, moon passing the natal ascendant. Um, Sun passing natal sun, moon passing the natal ascendant and the natal Mars point. Moon at natal moon, um, sun at the natal midheaven. Also on this chart, I've overlaid the times uh, from that crude oil horoscope when sun passes the four corners of the rectangle. And let's face it, even though Meg Energy is making heavy oil, it is still an oil stock. Uh, and it's interesting to see how um, how human emotion will take the the swing points from the crude oil futures, and they will be reflected on the price chart for Meg Energy. 
So I've got one, two, three, four corners of the rectangle in 2022. And sure, they align to swing low, swing high, swing high, swing low. Yep. I got a Mars uh, event, but now Mars didn't pass all four corners of the triangle in 2022 because it went retrograde midway through 2022 and it went backwards. That's okay. Um, so here and now, you know, the price of Meg Energy is above the 200-day moving average. So we say the trend is bullish, and it certainly is. And I'm going to give you more on that just a minute here. Now, the one thing I always look at, in addition to the astrology, is some manner of chart technical indicator. One of my faves is the slow stochastic. And you can see here that, you know, Meg Energy has had a bit of a run of late. It's gone, you know, uh, from 17 bucks to 22, almost 23 in the past short while. But now it looks like it's getting ready to take a break. The um, stochastic has fallen beneath its upper boundary on it. And to me, that is uh, an indication that it is going to take a, it's not going to fall apart, but it's it's going to trade, you know, sideways to slightly down. And that actually is going to create another buying opportunity for the next leg higher. I also look at Fibonacci and Broadly speaking, from the middle of 2022 until September of 2022, the price of mega energy worked its way lower in fits and starts and stops and goes. But then it generally recovered um, up until just recently. And it, you know, it did so in, in waves or, or stops and starts. But the important thing to note is the, the technical chart stochastic is telling me this thing is rolling over. Why? Because it's actually retraced Fibonacci 78.6% of the down move from 2022. Anytime I see a stock retracing 78.6, that usually uh, is time for it to have a little pause. So I'm not at all surprised that Meg is taking a little break here. And what else does Fibonacci tell us? Um, September of 22 through November, it went up, then it pulled back, and it pulled back a Fibonacci 61.8%. Very nice. It could have easily pulled back 78.6, but it didn't. Um, these, these pullbacks and these advances are always going to be 38.2, 61.8, or 78.6. Three of them. Take your pick. So where do we go from here? Let's say that Meg wants to take a break. If it pulls back to $20.50, that is a 61.8% retracement of the move that it made recently. If it pulls back to $19, that will be a 61.8% retracement. You know, it could, it could retrace even more, but I, I don't think so. So what I'm going to be looking for then is for price to get nearer to each of these Fibonacci retracements, uh, I'm going to be looking to see if that aligns then with either astrological events pertaining to the crude oil futures, the rectangle, or astrological events pertaining to the Meg Energy 2010 first trade horoscope. And I'm going to be looking to also see, you know, at these retracement levels, what is my slow stochastic doing? Is it indicating a possible change of trend and a, and a buy signal? So there's, you know, there's about four bits of evidence that I'm going to be looking for uh, at each of these Fibonacci retracement levels as they come. So you're going to take your ephemeris tables or your software or however you get your data, and you're going to be looking then to see what events are coming at you relative to the Meg Energy 2010 first trade horoscope. So starting in a couple days, we've got Venus at natal Jupiter, Moon at natal Jupiter. Um, 27th of February gives me Moon at natal Midheaven, Sun at natal Moon early in March. Um, March 19th till pretty much the end of March, that's Mars slowly passing one of these corners of the crude oil rectangle. Um, moon at natal moon, moon at natal sun. Um, April 
uh, 9th through the middle of April, that's the sun passing one of these corners of the crude oil rectangle. So you're going to lay out all of these dates in a, in a journal on your desk, and you're going to watch the Fibonacci retracements. You're going to watch for these events to occur. And at some point, you're going to make a buying decision on Meg Energy. I always look at the fundamentals of any stock that I'm analyzing. And in the case of Meg, for the first nine months of 2022, it generated $1.3 billion free cash flow. That's not, that's not revenue earnings. That's free cash flow after all is said and done. What did they do with that free cash flow? Very smartly, they bought back $1.1 billion of their outstanding debt. They used 200 million of that to uh, give the shareholders a nice um, year end bonus. What they've got left in terms of debt is 1.2 billion. We're looking at an oil company that literally by the end of 2023, this year, debt free. Unbelievable. Uh, these guys are producing 102,000 barrels a day, sending it to Edmonton, upgrading it, sending it on to the U.S. Gulf Coast refiners. The, the refiners need this oil. They can't function without it. That's why they're paying Meg Energy between $80 and $90 a barrel. This stuff is, is uh, a highly prized, highly sought-after commodity. The remaining reserves in the ground at the Meg Energy project, 40 years. So there's no danger of this thing going away. At 21 bucks a share, um, I would say it's undervalued, given that it's headed towards being debt free. And if you think about it, in 2010 at its IPO, it IPO'd at 35. So here we are trading at 21. Uh, yeah, this is an undervalued story. So keep a close watch on it. You're gonna wanna get some mega energy. And to wrap things up, don't forget to visit me at investingsuccess.ca. Um, I've got a number of these reports and letters I, I do for paid subscribers. And, you know, I make them as educational as I can. I profile major indices. I profile commodities. I pick individual stocks. Uh, you can also find me on a platform called udemy.com. I've got a, a learning course on there. I want to get a couple more of them teed up and up there. Um, the Financial Astrology Almanac, it's been out for a while. It's available on Amazon. Um, it's also in ebook format. Um, if you want to go to your local bookstore and, and support your, your local bricks and mortar retail store, they can get it uh, and they will get it through a publisher in the US called Ingram. And the reason I, I uh, haven't been seen too much lately, I've been busy, uh, head down at my desk I'm um, going to be coming out with a book here probably uh, at the end of March. Uh, we're still finalizing the colors on the title, but the book is going to be called Follow the Trend. And it really is all about the trend. And what I'm finding is a lot of people don't know how to identify the trend. They tend to get caught up on um, Reddit and Robinhood and, and social media, and they listen to people on television, you know, booyah, it's a buy. Bah. No, that's not how it works. There, there actually is a trend to the market, to a commodity, to a stock. And this book basically takes you right back to basics and it shows you how to identify the trend. Uh, with the trend understood, that in itself is a potent, powerful tool. You add that then to technical chart indicators. You add that to the astrology that we talk about. And um, yeah, your, your way of looking at the markets, um, it, it's going to change. And you're going to become a much better trader, a much better investor. Anyway, that's it for me. Um, time to start my 60th revolution around the sun. So thanks for listening. Have yourselves a great day. And we will talk real soon. Cheers.